have a feeling we're tied. Mindy, you are correct. We are at a tie. That's another point. <laughs> that doesn't count. That one doesn't count. <laughs> Welcome to the season finale of Smithsonian Channel's Knowledge Knockout. The internet game show where aviation geeks go full throttle with their knowledge of aviation history, famous flights, pioneering pilots, and more. I'm your host, John Canal. Today, our ace pilots from episodes one and two will compete for the chance to go head to head with the ultimate aviation expert, Dr. Bob Vanderlinden, a curator at Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. He's one of the original historians of the museum and started working there in 1975. Today, he oversees the America by Air Gallery. Let's meet our returning contestants. Jack, an aerospace engineer from Wichita. Triumph over Damien, an Army Medevac UH-60 Black Hawk pilot from Miami. It was a real dogfight that ended with a steal. Mindy, a pilot and plane sales rep from Orlando and a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, soared over Scott, an aviation journalist and editor from New York City with a record high score. She's got no drag in her rudder. Waiting in the wings is our curator, Dr. Bob Vanderlinden. The rules are the same. Players have five seconds to answer a question. If they get the answer right, they receive one point. If they get the answer wrong, their opponent has the chance to steal and gain two points. Let's get started. The person whose birth month comes first get the first question. Jack, you were born in January. And Mindy, you were born in June. So Jack, you're up first. How are you feeling? As good as I can be. Mindy, how about you? Same. This is very nerve-wracking now. <laughs> <laughs> good luck to you both. Here we go. Jack, what is the nickname of this plane, first used as a World War I trainer, and then as a mail-carrying and barnstorming plane in the 1920s? It's the Jenny, Curtis Jenny. The Jenny is correct. The Smithsonian acquired this plane in 1918, and they've had it in the collection for 105 years. Mindy, Pan Am had a fleet of these spacious planes, which often included lounges, dining rooms, and sleeping berths. What were they called? Those were the Sikorsky S40s. That is correct also called flying boats. Pan Am revolutionized commercial aviation in the 1950s with the first modern jetliner, a Boeing 707. Okay, Jack, the next question is for you. How many parts is a Boeing 747 comprised of? C, six million. Six million is correct. Mindy, you've got a fierce competitor in Jack. <laughs> next question for you. This fighter jet was the first to take off and land on an aircraft carrier. What was it called? That's the McDonnell Phantom. Mindy, the judges have accepted your answer. Woo! The McDonnell FH-1 Phantom. Jack, what type of business did the Wright brothers own before they became aviation legends? Be a bicycle shop. A bicycle shop is correct. Mindy, next question for you. How close can the U.S. Navy Blue Angels fly to each other in their Diamond 360 formation? The answer is B, 18 inches, and I just got to see them last week, and I can't really measure that from afar, but I know the answer is 18 inches. Should have brought your ruler. Right. <laughs> 18 inches is correct. Okay, now let's get the results of our first round of trivia. I have a feeling we're tied. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> Mindy, you are correct. We are at a tie. That's another point. <laughs> that doesn't count, that one doesn't count. <laughs> Sorry, that doesn't count. Mindy has three and Jack has three, so we have to go to a tiebreaker. For the tiebreaker, I'll ask one question. You have 10 seconds to write down the answer. I'll call time. Both will reveal your written answer to the camera. Here's your question. Approximately how many square feet is the interior of Air Force One? 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, or 6,000? Okay, pencils down. 
Please reveal your answers to the camera. Mindy put B and Jack wrote C. The correct answer is B, 4,000. And... Oh. <sighs> that was close, it was down to the wire, but Mindy won this lightning round with that tiebreak. Oh boy. <laughs> you will be facing off with our curator, Dr. Bob Vanderlinden, in just a few moments. Jack, you were a fantastic competitor. Is there anything you'd like to say? No, uh, good luck, Mindy. I, uh, you know, I almost put B. I don't know why. For some reason, I was thinking C first. I should have gone with the gut. But I uh, hope you the, wish you the best. And uh, now I don't have to go through the uh, shame of uh, the, a beatdown from an expert. So yeah, do you want to help luck. me? Do you want to? You want to stay I wish, on? <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> me too. I think you'll need all the help you can get there. <laughs> Agreed. I've got, I'm sure you'll you'll kill it. Thanks, Mindy. You're about to test your knowledge against a Sky Scholar who has had his PhD since before you were born. Are you ready for the showdown? Not now, not when you say it like that. It's time for the main event. Let's welcome our esteemed curator, Dr. Bob Vanderman. Bob, you're facing off against Mindy, who flew circles around her last two opponents. The person whose birth month comes first will get the first question. Bob? As you know, you were born in September. And Mindy, you were born in June. So Mindy, you're up first. Let the showdown begin. Mindy, what was the nickname of this 1920s airmail pilot who is known for performing stunts, flying at high speeds, and sometimes damaging airplanes? I wanna say it's something like Crazy Bill. Close, but incorrect. Bob, you have a chance to steal for two points. Wild Bill. That is correct. Wild, Wild Bill. Bill. Wild Bill had quite the reputation over his eight years of flying. Sadly, he died when his plane crashed on a New York to Chicago route in 1928. Yeah, a little too wild. Or crazy. <laughs> okay, Bob, the next question is for you. Who is known as the only professional female skywriter in the world? I have no idea. Mindy, you have a chance to steal. That is Suzanne Oliver. Mindy, that is correct. Susan began skywriting for Pepsi in 1980, and today she skywrites about 500 messages per year with her husband. Yeah, I could tell you the airplane, but I didn't know her. <laughs> it's a pretty cool job. Yes, I can imagine. Okay, Mindy, the next question is for you. Which major airline was the first to offer lie flat seats in business class? Was it Emirates, United Airlines, KLM, or British Airways? I believe that's D, British Airways. That is correct. Bob. Good for you. Pressure's on. Yeah, good question. I had no clue. It's great. Bob, the world's shortest commercial runway of just 1,300 feet is located where? The Isle of Barra in Scotland, the Caribbean island of Seba, Le Sotu in South Africa, or the Caribbean island of St. Bart's? I have no clue. I'll go with A just for the heck of it. Oh no, that is incorrect. Mindy, you have a chance to steal. I'm gonna go with B, Caribbean island of Saba. The Caribbean has a lot of really tricky runways. The correct answer is B, the Caribbean island of Saba. She's kicking my butt now. <sighs> okay, Mindy, the next question is for you. Which of these airplanes is the Curtis C-46 Commando, also known as the Whale? Oh gosh, okay, I'm going to just guess. This is not my forte. I will guess B. Right. Even your guesses are right, Mindy. B oh! is the correct answer. Truly a guess. I knew Bob would know that one, so I was hoping yeah, that this is more. Yeah, this is more in my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob, you're gonna like the next question. I hope so. Which of these airplanes <laughs> was used for training by the British Royal Air Force and was known as a de Havilland Tiger Moth. That's C. C is correct. I told you I know these. Yeah. Show me airplane pictures, I'm fine. No more, no, no more of them. No, no, lots more, lots more, that's great. <laughs> 
Alrighty, Mindy has taken the lead, but Bob, there's still a chance for you to pull ahead. There's one more question for each of you. Mindy, the next question is for you. What vital piece of the P-47's propulsion system is shown in this video? The intake. I don't know. That's incorrect. Bob, you have a chance to steal two points. It's a supercharger. A supercharger is correct. Okay, Bob, the next question is for you. This four-engine airplane was introduced in 1946 and was used as a commercial airliner. There are only a few left in the world. What is the make and model of this airplane? That's a Douglas DC-6. That is correct. The Douglas DC-6. We have a DC-7 nodes in America by Air, so they're very similar, just different engines. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie. Well, I like ties, we can keep it that way. Oh boy. <laughs> it's only fitting that Knowledge Knockout should end in a tiebreaker. This will be another airplane silhouette question, right? No, <laughs> no more. For the tiebreaker, I'll ask one question. You have 10 seconds to write down the answer. I'll call time and you'll both reveal your written answers to the camera. Here's your question. In 2003, this four-seater plane became the first single-piston engine aircraft with a glass panel, fully integrated avionics via computer screens to be FAA certified. What is the make and model of this airplane? You have 10 seconds to write down your answers. Okay, pencils down. Let's reveal our answers to the camera. I think she wins. She has the model number, so. Bob has Cirrus and Mindy has Cirrus SR22. By providing the full make and model, Mindy, you got it right. And that means Mindy is our champion. Mindy. You are the inaugural <laughs> winner of the Knowledge Knockout, an aviation extraordinaire in your own right, soaring to the wind with flying colors. You studied well, challenged our curator, and won. Mindy, how are you feeling? It must be my lucky day. That's the only explanation. <laughs> Bob, you were a formidable competitor, and we know all our contestants were thrilled to have the chance to test their aviation knowledge against yours. Is there anything you'd like to say? Congratulations. Good fight. Thank Throw you. some more history at me. General aviation is not my strong suit, as you just found out. <laughs> and luckily, it is my strong suit. So good. That was yeah. Give me, you know, me. <laughs> you know, commercial or military or something really old stuff. That's fine. But no, well done. Well played. This concludes our first season of Knowledge Knockout. Thank you to our amazing contestants, our student explainers, Denise and Caitlin, our curator, Dr. Bob Vanderlinden, and the staff of the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, who helped behind the scenes to make this all possible. Thanks for watching Knowledge Knockout. If you played along, let us know how you did in the comments. Until then, we wish you blue skies ahead, and congratulations, Mindy. I will never, ever forget the model number of the Cirrus SR-22. Yep, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> so I sell those for a living, Bob, so don't feel bad. <laughs> if you got that wrong, you'd have a problem. Right, right. <laughs>